hi year 11 i just wanted to make this quick video to help you out understanding um, the data analysis for the physical field work which is the field work from um, last lesson from lesson four and the reason i just want to go through this with you is because i do think it's difficult and one of the main reasons it's difficult is you did the coast work over lockdown in year 10 so I'm aware that for some of you, your coastal knowledge isn't brilliant and that lack of understanding is going to make it difficult to understand what is going on with the analysis of this field work. So this video is for people who haven't attended the live lesson on Monday when I went over this and you just want a bit of a bit of a better understanding from the analysis from your physical field work. So. With your analysis of your physical field work, you're looking at this data here, okay? And we've got a whole load of numbers and you would have put it into those graphs and you would have used those numbers and those graphs showing the sediment drop to decide if your hypothesis that the groins were preventing longshore drift, okay, preventing that transportation was true or not, okay? And here is the analysis from the... Um, from the field work booklet with the bits you should have filled in and this is the bit that i'm concerned there's not going to be brilliant understanding because you know there's lots of numbers and there's lots of talking about the north side of the groin and the south side of the groin and i think that that might have just all got a bit lost and a bit woolly for you so i've drawn this diagram and i'm going to try and go through it with you now okay because it looks really confusing this here okay is swanage bay so here's the sand and here's the sea and these lines represent the groins okay so the groins are these fences that go out into the sea and the idea behind them is that they trap the sand and in doing so they create a nice big wide beach on swanage bay and that nice big beach has two purposes Firstly, it's good for tourism, okay, so Swanage Bay is a really big tourist area. Swanage is down the south coast of the UK, it gets relatively good weather for the UK. So a nice big beach is going to attract tourists to go there, it's going to support businesses. It's also, by creating a big wide beach, you are, pre you are creating a natural sea defence. Because when the waves are coming in, if there's a beach there, the land is a bit higher and the waves aren't going to reach as far up the beach and be able to attack the land at the back. Okay, so a nice big beach is more friction for the waves to have to go up and therefore the waves are going to lose energy. So that's why you want a nice big wide beach and that's what these groins are all about. Because what you've got at Swanage Bay is the sand is being taken from the south down here and it's being moved north up here. And if you're not careful, it'll be taken off and carried off the beach, meaning that your beach here will be narrow, okay? And then you're not gonna get your tourists and the waves are gonna be able to hit the land more easily and create erosion. Now, the reason that the sand is being taken from the south to the north is this, the prevailing wind. So the prevailing wind is the normal wind direction. And we can see here from this arrow that in Swanage, the prevailing wind comes from the southeast. The wind controls the wave direction. Okay, the waves come onto the beach in the same direction as the wind. And the wave coming onto the beach is known as a swash. And we can see that in this little diagram here. So these arrows here represent the waves coming on and off the beach. This arrow going onto the beach is the swash and the arrow coming back off is the backwash. Okay, so swash, backwash, swash, backwash. Now the observant amongst you will notice that the swash is coming on at that angle that is the same as the wind and the backwash is going straight. That is because the backwash is controlled by gravity. So no matter what the direction of the swash, the backdrop but so the backwash always goes straight. So we have this zigzag pattern of the waves going up the beach. And these waves, as they zigzag up the beach, they carry the sediment with them. Okay. 
and if there are no groins then all the sediment gets moved to the other end of the beach and then it's lost okay so in Swanage we have got longshore grit drift going from south to the north okay and we can see that in this diagram here now what I've tried to do next on this diagram is do like a zoomed in bit here of these three groins to try to show you exactly what is happening so here's the groins okay and here comes the first confusing bit with regards to the north side and the south side of the groin because here's the south side okay and here's the north side yeah so you need to remember that first of all which is the south side of the groin so the south side of the groin is facing south and the north side of the groin is facing north okay that's the first thing to get your head around which is the north side and which is the south side of the groin so what we've got happening is the sand being moved up the beach so the sand is being taken from here it's being moved by the waves and then it hits the groin can't go any further so it gets deposited and in between the next two groins we have got the same thing happening the waves with the swash and the backwash are coming onto the beach they are moving the sediment taking it from here the north side of the groin removing it and then it hits the groin like it gets stuck and it has to deposit it and so forth okay in between all these groins we have got longshore drift happening but the waves can't take the sand completely off the beach because these groins are in the way now with our field work what we are saying is that if we look at the amount of sand that there is on the north side and the south side of the groin we will find less sand on the north side of the groin and more sand on the south side of the groin because the sand is being moved okay but we can't measure the, si the height of the sand because we don't know where the sand starts so what we have to do is we have to measure the drop okay so we're measuring the sand that isn't there rather than the sand that is there and then this again is when it can become a bit confusing because you are looking at a big drop here and a little drop here okay so you get a big drop on the north side because the sand's been taken away and you get a small drop on the south side because the sand has been put down so this means when you look at your data the big number okay the bigger the number the less sand there is and the smaller the number the more sand there is okay so that's difficult to get your head around now if we look back at our data that's what we should see and if that is what we see then our hypothesis has been pro been proven because the sand will have been taken from here and it will have been stopped here so let's have a look at our data okay and we can see from our data that the north side has the bigger drop and the south side has the smaller drop and that is the case all the way along we've got one where it's a little bit similar okay the drop isn't as big but even so it's still following the right pattern so on each one of these there is less sand on the north and there is more sand on the south meaning that our hypothesis using our primary data has been proven the groins are working and the groins are trapping the sand now we need to look at our secondary data and see if our secondary data backs this idea up so this is our secondary data it is a picture taken from up high of the beach and it's been taken by somebody else okay and what we can hopefully get from this secondary data is we can see from the level of where the waves are coming up where the beach is bigger and where the beach is smaller so where there's more sand and where there's less sand and then this picture is quite confusing and I had to look at it a couple of times just sort of thinking well, what on earth is going on because this bit here this beach here is bigger than this beach here which seems as though it is opposite to our results okay it looks like it's opposite to our primary 
because when you look at this you're thinking well okay well that looks to me like it's um the north side okay and this looks like it's the south side so that looks backwards to me okay it looks like the north side has got more sand and the south side has got less sand that isn't the case okay this picture is flipped and the reason it's flipped is where it's been taken from okay the picture has been taken from the north okay standing here looking south and you know that because it looks like the sea's on the wrong side okay compare this picture with this diagram on this diagram okay this aerial diagram the sea is here okay on the east which is right whereas on this side on this photo the sea looks like it's here the sea looks like it's on the west and that's because the photo has been taken from the north okay so on this diagram very confusingly okay this number two is the south side of the groin and this is the north side of the groin okay it's counterintuitive so with this we can see that the, the the sand there's more sand on the south side there's less sand on the north side because the sea is getting further up and that's correct okay it backs up our hypothesis that there is less sand okay and then there's more sand here so less sand on the north side and more sand on the south side so hopefully that clears that up for you a little bit i know it is super confusing um but spend a little bit of time just thinking about it having a look at that diagram and hopefully that will become clear but the upshot of all of it is if you were carrying out this field work and you had got those results then you would be able to say that both your primary data and your secondary secondary data have proven your hypothesis that hard engineering would prevent longshore drift at Swanage. If that still doesn't make sense, please do let me know and I will try to go over it with you again. Okay, thanks very much Year 11. See you later.